Hello and welcome. I'm James Murphy from Mcoding, and today we're talking about the single most important feature coming soon in Python 3.10. I'm talking about structural pattern matching and the match statement. Depending on when you're watching this video, Python 3.10 might already be out, but at the time of recording, which is March 17th, 2021, Python 3.9 is the latest version. I just saw that PEP 634 on structural pattern matching was accepted, so I had to download my own copy of the latest branch of Python, compile it, and try running it for myself. As you can see down here in my Python console, I am running a version of Python 3.10. Uh, you can see here the exact git commit hash uh, of the commit that I'm using. So I couldn't wait to check out this new feature. I had to just compile it myself, and I thought I'd make a video about it. So here it is. Basically, in prior versions of Python, we already had some very primitive versions of pattern matching. So if I have, for example, uh, x comma y, I can say x comma y is equal to 1 comma 2. Now, what does this mean? Well, Python is smart enough to figure out that, well, this is a sequence of length 2, and this looks like a sequence of length 2, so it figures out to assign x to 1 and y to 2. This new syntax through the match statement takes it to a whole new level. Let's take a look at some examples. So all throughout this video, you can look on your left to see the new syntax, and on the right, how you would have to write it or what might be the simplest way to write it uh, without using the match statement. So of course, Python is a Turing complete language. The match statement doesn't really add anything new in terms of what programs can be written. What it adds is a new way to think about programs. So on the left is going to be the new match syntax, and on the right is going to be uh, the old way of doing it. First up, we have this function, command split, which takes in a command, which is, let's say, a string. We'll do a command split, and that will break up the string into a list of strings. And then we want to do different things based off of what those things are. So you can imagine uh, this would be useful if you're like writing a shell. Just for demonstration purposes, I have a few different commands here. So you can see we're going to match what does this command dot split look like. And then the syntax is you have a match, and then the thing that you want to match, and then a bunch of cases that it could look like. So the way that it works is Python will compute this, and then try each case one after another until it finds a match. If it doesn't find a match, it's kind of like an if false, where it just wouldn't execute anything in the body. This is similar to a switch statement, but on steroids. So you can see that on the left, we have a much more declarative style than on the right. Well, first off, the code on the right is terrible. I mean, can anyone look at this and just read what it's doing? Probably not. You have to go through every single one and check, you know, is the length two and the first one zero? You have to really read every single line. Whereas on the left, it's a much more declarative style where you just say, this is what it looks like. Does it match? So let's just slowly go through a few different cases, and then you'll sort of get the idea of how the match statement works. So in this first case, we're matching a list with one element whose only thing in it is the word make. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now, technically speaking, when you do a match like this, it doesn't have to be a list that you're matching against. It can be any sequence type. So if I passed in a tuple, it would still match a list. In the second case, we're saying, we have a sequence of two elements, the first of which is make, and then we just put in the name of a variable here. Similar to the way a for loop works, this CMD does not have to be already defined. This is uh, a name, and we are binding whatever value is in the sequence at that point to this name. Now, if you read the documentation, it is very careful to always use the word bind rather than assign, which you might you know, colloquially think of. We're going to assign the value here to the variable CMD. But for technical reasons, it is not actually assigning. The next case is just another single element restart. We've already been over that. This next case is uh, the word rm, remove, followed by any number of extra arguments. So this is similar to a star args situation here, where there can be zero or more things here. And this files variable will then be a tuple uh, containing all of those uh, extra things. So you can see on the right-hand side what it's actually doing. It's going to be uh, checking if the length is right, if it sees the RM, and then assigning uh, 
or technically not a signing, but I'm going to slip up and use that word. Um, it's going to be assigning files to uh, whatever's left. And then finally, this underscore is the Python way of saying a wildcard, anything. So case underscore will match any pattern. So in the comparison with a switch statement, this is kind of like your default case. If nothing else matches, then this case will be executed. Now, if I didn't have this wildcard case here, and I passed in something that doesn't match any of the other things, then just nothing would be printed. It, if it doesn't match, it doesn't execute. And you can see on the right-hand side how this compares. Uh, the wildcard is much like an else. So let's go ahead and just uh, put in some test cases to see what they do. Um, and you know, run it to prove that I actually compiled the Python. So you can see command split make. We do a make, a make clean, a restart, remove ABC, and then something that doesn't match. And you can see we do a make, a make clean. So we say found command clean, uh, and then a restart, and then deleting the files, uh, ABC. And so you see files was passed here as a list and then the wildcard statement. OK, let's move on to the next example. So in the last example, we were matching on a command.split. I just wanted to put this in so you can see that you can actually match on a variable itself. Um, you don't have to match on some sub-expression. So this is just almost a simpler example. I can match um, a variable against certain specific values. So in this case, uh, it will check to see if they're equal by using the equals equals operator. Unless, of course, you're using true, false, or none, in which case they'll be compared with the is operator. So in this case, I think I might actually prefer the old syntax. And of course, if we add in a little use case here, then we can see that it matches the 42. OK, let's move on. In this example, we see that you can use the pipe operator to give alternatives for the same case. So in this case, I take in a command, and I can either say north or go north, and both of those will have the same effect. You can even do it when you're binding a variable, even if the position of the variable is different from case to case. So you can see in this case, I can say get object or pick up object or pick object up, and all of those will match. Notice how simple this syntax is. If I wanted to do the exact same thing, this is what it looks like in Python 3.9, say. Much more complicated on this side, much easier to be read on this side. And on the right side, we have code duplication, which means a chance for error, especially if something changes in the future. So you can see if I add these two use cases, then both of these match in the expected way. So I said go north and pick up sword. This example is short and sweet, but it really shows off the important feature of structural pattern matching. It's composable. In any pattern, I can put another pattern as part of the pattern. So you can see, in this case, I'm matching. I have a list. The first element is go, and the second element is this pattern. So it can be north, south, east, or west. So I can say go north, go south, go east, or go west. When I have alternatives like this, I'm not necessarily going to know which one of that subpattern matched. So Python also allows you to use this add and then the name of the variable to capture the value of that match. You can see that with these test cases. See, so going north, going east. The direction gets first north and then east. This next example shows off guards in match statements. So this is similar to when you have a list comprehension. You say uh, something for something and something if, and then you give a condition. And it only goes through the elements where that condition is true. So you can have a case and then say, this case only applies if this condition holds. So in this situation, you have a command, which is like telling a character which direction to move. And then you're also passing in a list of exits. So um, if there's an exit on the north, but there's a wall on the east, then you can't go to the east. You could only go to the north, something like that. So I'll say go direction, but only if the direction is in the set of allowable directions. And if I match something, which is go, and then here's a use of a wildcard, go, and then anything that didn't match this, then I just say you can't go that way. 
So if I give these two examples, go north and go north both times, but if the exits are east and south in the first case and then north in the second case, then we should expect that it is only able to go north in the second case. And indeed, when we don't have a north exit, when we say go north, we get can't go that way. Um, but when there is, then we get going north. For this next example, imagine that we have some kind of event-driven architecture. We're receiving events, and they're getting passed to this function. And our events can be clicks, they can be key presses, or it can be a quit event. Now, you're really going to like this one because this massively simplifies the code, makes it way easier to read. I hope you appreciate um, how nice this pattern matching is in this instance. So I take an event, and I'm matching on the event. The match statement cases can use the following syntax. You can put in, for a case, the name of a class, and you can fill in some of its attributes. So in this case, I've filled in the attribute button, and I've given it a value. So this case is matching. Is the event an instance of the click class? So is it a click whose button is left? And then notice position x, y. x and y aren't defined here. So x and y are going to be uh, variables that get assigned the value of these positions. You might think that this syntax is going to construct a click. And in any other place in Python, that is what would happen. But specifically, inside a match statement, next to a case, just like this, if you uh, write what looks like the constructor of a class, what you're actually saying is match something that is an instance of that class with those particular attributes. So you can see this case, I'll match any left click. This will match any other click. In this case, I'm matching a key press, but I'm specifying uh, capital Q or lowercase q um, as a positional argument, not as a keyword argument. Like here, I'm saying key name equals up arrow, or here, I'm effectively saying key name is capital Q or lower Q. If you want to match any instance of a class, you just give it like this with an empty constructor. And finally here, this is kind of another wildcard case, except I'm giving a name to it. I'm saying, if you reach this case, it will match anything and um, will bind the name other event to that value. Now, of course, I already had access to the variable event, so it's kind of pointless to give it another name, other event. Um, but if this was some kind of asynchronous framework, I might do something like you know event.get, at which point... I no longer have access to this as a variable. So this would allow me to capture it at that moment. But for now, let's just get rid of that. So here are the test cases for that function. We're going to do a left click at 0, 0, and then a quit, and then something that doesn't match. So you see, we have a left click, and then quitting, and then we caught the exception, so it didn't match um, in the other case. Now, before we move on, I just want to point out again look how much more readable the left-hand side is compared to the right-hand side. Even though my syntax highlighting isn't working properly on the left-hand side, for obvious reasons, PyCharm doesn't know about 310 syntax. But still, on the left-hand side, I can easily read through, know what case is going to be matched and what's going to happen, whereas the right-hand side, you really just have to read line by line. The last thing that I want to show off is dictionary matching. So let's match on an event, which you should be imagining that you have some kind of web API and you just got some JSON and now you want to act on that JSON um, based off of certain properties of it. So you say, what kind of JSON event does this look like? Well, if you have a dictionary like object, you can match it um, as a dictionary. You can say, does this thing have a key called transport with value HTTP? And then you can act on that. Now, it's fine if there are other keys in the dictionary. So I could have transport HTTP and then some other value floating around in there. It only matches on um, the things that are present. In this case, you can see that we can have multiple keys, multiple values. And uh, what this is saying here with this n, which again is not defined, this is like the variable in a for loop, we are going to define it at that moment. It's saying, is the key page number present? And if so, assign or bind its value to the name n. So let's just add in that test case. I'm going to pass in a get request um, for the articles page, and I want page 5. And there is some extra info in there, which is not going to affect 
the um, match statement. And you can see, let me get that article for you on page five. So that's the match statement. I know that there are going to be heavy, heavy debates about where it is most appropriate to use a match statement. You know, is this good code style? What is good code style for this you know, new kind of statement? There are going to be lots of debates on when and where it is most appropriate to use a match statement. But I think that at least we can take away uh, from this video that in some situations, a match statement can take totally unreadable code and make it readable at a glance. So although I think that the match statement is not really necessary as a programming language feature, I do think that it will find its place uh, in the Python community and it will find its use cases. So that's my take on structural pattern matching, the match statement, what I think is going to be the single most important new feature introduced in Python 3.10. Let me know if you find any other interesting uses for the match statement, or even better, if you think that there's something else new in Python 3.10, which is even better than the match statement. So I hope you enjoyed this sneak preview of what's coming ahead in Python 3.10. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next one.